Hello and welcome back to this course, covering the exam topics for the JNCIS ENT certification. In this section of the course, we're reviewing ISIS concepts, configuration, and monitoring in Junos. In this lesson, we'll be reviewing the ISIS neighbor adjacency formation and designated intermediate system election processes. See, just like OSPF, ISIS has rules and a process to follow to form neighbor relationships. In this lesson, we'll review those rules and the process the devices follow to establish the adjacency and exchange routing information. First, let's take a closer look at the rules and state machine for ISIS adjacency formation. In the diagram on the right, we see the adjacency formation process and neighbor states that R1 and R2 will see each other as during the process. In the beginning, we see that both R1 and R2 see each other as being in a down state. This is a little inaccurate because neighbors are dynamically discovered in ISIS, and in this state, the routers essentially are just unaware of each other. So, they just wouldn't have any entry for one another at all. The first step is R2's IIHPDU is sent out and received by R1. When R1 receives the PDU, it recognizes that this is from a new neighbor. It will check the list of neighbors that R2 is aware of and will not see its own identifier. So, it will create a neighbor relationship and show R2's neighbor state to be initializing. In the next step, R1 has R2 listed as a neighbor in the initializing state and sends out an IIH PDU towards R2. In this IIH PDU, R1 will include R2's identifier since it is now aware of R2. Once R2 sees its own identifier in the list, it will know that not only is there two-way communication established, but R1 also agrees with the information in the IIH PDU and is compatible with becoming adjacent. At this point, R2 will have a neighbor entry in its system, indicating R1 is a neighbor and will be in the up state. Then, R2 will send an IIH PDU back to R1, and this IIH PDU will now have R1's identifier in the list of neighbors, showing R1 that R2 has received its IIH PDU and agrees to form an adjacency. Once R1 receives this, R1 will transition its neighbor entry for R2 to an up state. R1 and R2 will continue exchanging IIH PDUs every hello time. R1 and R2 will then exchange CSNPs, describing all LSPs contained in their LSDBs. When R1 and R2 investigate the CSNPs and they find LSPs which are not contained in one another's LSDB, then they will send a PSNP for each LSP which they are missing to request the most up-to-date copy from their neighbor. Once their LSDBs are synchronized, R1 and R2 are considered full neighbors. Note that ISIS does not have the exchange or loading states like OSPF has. The neighbors are either initializing or up. When in an up state, we know the neighbor router is alive, not necessarily that the LSDB is finished synchronizing. Now, on the left, we have some constraints for neighbor formation. First, level 1 routers cannot form an adjacency with level 2 routers. Similarly, the converse is also correct. For a level 1 adjacency to form, the area IDs must be identical. So the routers must be in the same area. Level 2 adjacencies, however, are able to form between routers in different areas. Now, we've reviewed the neighbor formation process enough for ISIS. 
Now let's take a look at the designated intermediate system. The ISIS protocol has a device role, which is very similar to the designated router in OSPF. They're obviously even named similarly, both being designated devices of the term used in each protocol stack to reference a Layer 3 device, which connects Layer 2 domains. Like the DR, the DIS in ISIS is elected using a priority value, which is indicated in the Hello PDU. The highest priority value wins the election, and becomes the designated intermediate system. In the event that multiple devices advertise the same priority value, the highest MAC address of the interface connected to the broadcast segment is elected as the DIS. The MAC address in the ISO protocol suite is called the Subnetwork Point of Attachment, or SNPA. Unlike OSPF, however, ISIS has a level concept for hierarchical topologies, and an interface can form potentially both level 1 and level 2 adjacencies. Separate DIS may be elected for level 1 and level 2 adjacencies over the same broadcast segment. This may or may not result in the same intermediate system being elected as the DIS for both level adjacencies. A key difference between OSPF and ISIS, however, is that on a broadcast segment, all intermediate systems will form a full adjacency with all other intermediate systems on the broadcast segment. This means all nodes on the broadcast segment will exchange CSNPs, PSNPs, and LSPs with each other. The DIS still represents the broadcast segment as a pseudonode, though. Another key difference from OSPF is that ISIS does not elect a backup DIS. In the event that the DIS fails, a new DIS will be elected at that time, rather than a predetermined successor taking over. Additionally, if a neighboring IS on the broadcast segment begins sending IIH PDUs with a higher priority value than the existing DIS, the higher priority IS will preempt the existing DIS and become the new DIS. This is a significant and key difference to the operation of ISIS over OSPF, where an OSPF DR and BDR cannot be preempted, an ISIS DIS can. Let's finally move on to the metric cost calculation in ISIS. When ISIS was first developed, the cost, or metric, of an individual link could be a value from 0 to 63, making 64 possible values. The maximum cost of a total computed path was 16 times this value, of 0 to 1023, or 1024 possible values. This is now called narrow metrics as a wider metric field has been implemented in more recent ISIS implementation. Costs in ISIS using the narrow metrics were arbitrary, and could be set by a network administrator on a per-link basis. To calculate the total cost of a path, the metrics are added for each traversing link, and the sum is the resulting path cost. As you may imagine, this narrow metric is simply not granular enough for handling cost calculations of complex, high-speed networks of today. Wide metrics are now standard and increase the maximum metric value of a particular link from 63 to about 16 million. The maximum metric of a total path is about 4.3 billion. In Junos, the ISIS metric doesn't need to be arbitrarily or manually set by a network administrator. It can be directly calculated from a reference bandwidth and using the bandwidth of the link. I appreciate you working with me to review the adjacency formation process, designated intermediate system, and metrics in ISIS. 
I hope that this lesson has been informative for you, and I would like to thank you for viewing.